Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achern and welcome back to my OpenGL series. So last time, and in fact over the last few episodes, we've been abstracting all of our OpenGL code away into classes so that we can deal with them a little bit more easily when it actually comes time to writing real graphics code. And today we're going to continue that journey with shaders. So we've done like vertex buffers and vertex arrays and like vertex buffer layouts and all that kind of stuff. And now the next step is going to be shaders. So let's take a look at how we can actually abstract shaders. Well, first of all, let's just talk about it. So the way that I'm going to structure this right now is in, in a simple way, because shaders, when it comes to shaders, and if you guys don't know what a shader is, by the way, definitely check out the video that I made about shaders. But um, shaders are an incredibly complex topic and shaders are very, very important to graphics programming or any kind of rendering. Right. And so because of that, there tends to be like a tendency to actually make a rather complicated system that is both easy to use, but also extremely powerful. So in games and game engines, typically it's very common to have a custom shading language, which then compiles into shader code for the each kind of rendering API or platform and also is somewhat kind of controllable and extensible through the code at runtime, meaning that it's very common for games to actually generate new shaders and then have them be used for rendering while the game is actually running or while the game is loading or something like that, right? Shader generation and shader kind of creation on the fly is something that's very, very common. And in general, the whole like rabbit hole of let's write a shader system for our engine like tends to be such a massive topic and we're definitely not even going to scratch the surface today or in this entire OpenGL series because it's irrelevant, quite frankly, to actual OpenGL rendering. When we think about shaders in OpenGL, like there's nothing to it. You just write text in a file or as a string and you're done. Like there's no real need for any of the stuff that I just described. That kind of stuff is typically used by an actual game engine, right? And we're not talking about, about that in this series. This is just about OpenGL. Later on, when I make the game engine series, we will definitely talk about that stuff and we'll, we'll definitely implement a way more complicated shader and material system and all of that in that series. So I just wanna, just wanna be on the same page as everyone else here as to what we're actually trying to achieve today because by no means am I trying to write, uh, trying to write a crazy shader system or anything like that right here. All I'm doing today is I wanna basically take all of the OpenGL shader code that we've written, abstract that out behind an API that's really easy to use, understand, and keeps our actual kind of user or client side code really concise so that when it comes time to do really crazy things with graphics in this series, it's actually gonna be easy for you to read the actual code because it's gonna be high level and fairly conceptual and not like, you know, GL uniform matrix for FV or whatever the function names might be, right? It's gonna be very simple to deal with, hopefully. At least that's my goal for this. So that being said, what is it that we actually need to need to abstract in our shader code, right? Or what is it, what, like, we haven't done anything particularly too crazy. I mean, we're loading a shader from a file based on the source code that I'm reading right now. Um, and we're rendering it and I think it might have a uniform or something like that that we're setting. Yeah, we're, set, we're setting a uniform for FE with the color, I think of our, yes, with the color of our rectangle or our square. That's all that we're doing. But in general, what does a shader system need? Well, first of all, we want to be able to basically pass in a file or a string and have that be compiled as a shader. So that's kind of step one. We want to be able to bind and unbind the shader, step two. And step three is we want to be able to set the uniforms, all of the different uniforms for the shader. Okay. That's probably it for something that we're looking at right now. I mean, like reading back attributes, reading back, like being able to load in a shader and then ask the shader, Hey, what uniforms do you actually have? And what types are they? And all of that is something that would be incredibly useful. But again, that probably falls more into a shader system for a game engine. And that would actually require parsing the shader source code and all of that that's way out of the scope. It's going to take way too long. Not something I'm interested in right now anyway, um, for this series, I mean, but yeah, I mean, we just want to be able to create shaders, bind them for use and also, um, set uniforms. That's it. So let's dive in and start refactoring the source code so that we can do all of that. Okay. So step one under source, let's add a new item. I'm going to add a header file. It's going to be called shader. And I'm going to do the same thing for a CPP file. Okay. CPP file, of course, is going to include the header file. 
And let's go back to the header file and start editing it. So class shader. We're just going to have a few pub private and public things here. We'll have a constructor which takes in a const std string file name. Now what I did do last time, well not last time, but in the actual shader uh, episode, what I actually ended up doing was inside application, I did actually make it so that we could write our shader in one file because I find it very annoying having to deal with two files. So you can see that over here, we actually have a single file with two kind of sections, shader fragment and shader vertex. So that's very important. That also means that we don't need to be able to take in kind of, well, we don't need to take in two different files. We can just take in the file path and everything will be okay. So file path, uh, we're going to have a destructor. Uh, we're going to have bind, which is gonna be a const function and unbind. Now, of course, with OpenGL, we kind of bind vertex arrays and we bind vertex buffers and we bind like index buffers or textures or all that stuff. But with shader programs, it's called GL use program. Now, since we're making this API though, we're gonna be consistent and we're gonna call it bind for everything. So this is gonna be bind. And then we're gonna have unbind, and that is of course consistent with things like our vertex buffer, which also have a bind and unbind. All right, and then finally, I want to be able to also set uniforms. Now there are so many of these, and again, I'm not trying to create a complicated shader system, so I don't want to make something that's templated and then has to actually deal with its own kind of things. If I was writing this as actual kind of code for my engine or something like that, I would definitely just probably have a set value or set uniform function that was kind of templated and not even templated, but also like in a more complicated shader system, you would actually just parse the shader source code to work out what type a uniform variable was. And by doing that, you can validate kind of what goes into it and also design an API so that you can just have set value and all you need is the name and the value and it will automatically set the right data and all of that. Something we're definitely gonna talk about in the game engine series, but for now, we're just trying to keep this code really straightforward, really simple, so that again, when we actually get into making things in OpenGL, it's gonna be easy to read and people won't have to be like, whoa, this is such a complicated system. Why build something like that, right? It doesn't make any sense for this. So just keep that in mind. So we're gonna have like a set uniform for F or something like that, which is just gonna mimic our initial one. And then we'll add the other ones as we go along. So this of course is going to have to have a const std string name and then a float and then four floats for the value. So we'll just have V0, V1. If I had a maths library, which we need to get onto, I would probably just use that here. Like a, I mean like a vector four. Okay, so there we go. Um, and then I think that's pretty much it. So in terms of private, what we need here is an unsigned int renderer ID. And then we're also going to have some kind of caching system in a minute uh, for uniforms. And you'll find out why in a minute. Um, I'll also have a private function down here, which is going to be an unsigned int, I think, get uniform location. And that's gonna take in a const std string name as well. And that's going to be used to retrieve our OpenGL uniform locations. All right, right click here. And then using, using Visual Assist, I'll create method implementations. I'm also going to include string here because it's getting a little bit sad at me. Okay, cool. So back over here, let's start filling all this stuff out. Now for debug purposes, I am, I am actually going to also save that file path just so that we can print out like what what file the shader belongs to if we need to. So I'll just set that up here and file path, file path. I'm also going to assign render ID to zero. And then I'm going to write a function called compile shader. And this is just going to be another private function here, void compile shader. We might want to return false or something. I might actually make this a boolean. And then compile shader. Let's go over here. I'll make it just beneath the destructor and I'll call it compile shader, of course, shader. And it's actually a bool. All right, cool. So compile shader, if we go back to our application code, we've already written all this code. We're just refactoring it. So here's the create shader code. Um, that already has a vertex shader and a fragment shader, which is cool. Uh, I'm just going to take all of this. And in fact, this entire function, copy it. I'm gonna put it here. Now I could leave it a static because it's really not gonna change, but I will refactor it in a minute to be an actual member. And then this I think is our compile shader function, which I tried to make here but obviously I forgot that I actually had it here. And then this is our parse shader, which just figures that stuff out. So really I'm just copying everything uh, from our actual main application file into here. And then we need shader program source as well. Shader program source might just be a struct that I actually make up here 
in this class rather than have it in the header file because I only want it accessible here. Um, if we scroll up, we're going to have to steal some of these includes as well. So let's pop them down here. And uh, we definitely need the renderer as well. Okay, cool. So that looks pretty good. Um, of course, let's clean this up now. So we have parse shader, which I'm, I'm gonna make all of these methods. So we're gonna have parse shader. Um, we don't need the file path because we have that on the member, although I might pass that in anyway. Um, compile, so this does not need to be static anymore. That looks good. Uh, create shader as well, we'll not make that static and we'll make it a member shader like that. And this is probably a bit big. Let me make it a bit smaller. Hopefully you guys can still see. Compile shader becomes a member as well. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's start making these actual functions. So we have, um, I might make them up here, I guess. Unsigned int create shader. And then we also have uh, compile shader, which is what I tried to make, but that returns an int. So let's edit that. Yeah, in fact, I'm going back on my whole original plan here and actually just making it match what I had in application because I forgot I had half of that code. Let's copy that as well for parse shader. Just get rid of the shader thing. All right, cool. So that's what our API kind of looks like right now. Um, and let's get rid of this. And this is, okay, so we're going to, well, I guess because we've actually got shader program source here, we kind of do need to have that there. So I'm just gonna, again, keep it simple and move this shader program source over here. Cool. All right, that looks pretty good. And of course we're getting errors here, but that's fine. Okay, so now we've actually converted this code to be inside this file instead of inside application. So let's remove it from application. Um, and now all we really need to do is actually make it work. So um, the first thing that we really need to do is inside our shader source code, in the constructor, we're just going to set mRenderer ID to be compile, or sorry, what is it? So the first thing we do is we pass the shader. Let's go back to application and actually see what it's doing. So when it comes to our shader, we're doing all of this basically. So these two lines are what we need. So we get the source and then mRenderer ID is what this is and that becomes create shader. Okay. And then of course, instead of this file path, we're gonna have file path like that. So we're really just maintaining this file path here as a member just for debugging purposes. Okay, in the destructor, I'm gonna call gl call gl delete program. And then this is going to be our m renderer ID. Now this is really only relevant if the renderer ID isn't zero. So if it's actually successful in creating it, uh, that all of this looks pretty good, I think. Bind and unbind, of course, is just gonna be gl call gl bind gl use program m renderer id and then unbind is going to use zero use program zero set uniform for f so if we go back to our application um we can kind of well we can see what it is gl uniform for f so gl call gl uniform for f uh now what we actually need here is the location of the uniform so we need a way to get the location of the uniform and then v0 v1 v2 v3 Okay, and that's where get uniform location comes in, which is just this code here. So gl call get uniform location, and then the name dot c string, and shader is m renderer id, just like that. Okay, cool. So what we need to do here is actually assign this. So unsigned int location equals gl get uniform location. If location equals negative one, it means that we don't actually have it. Now we could just make this code assert here, but sometimes it's quite valid for us to actually have negative one as a shader location. So if we have a uniform in our shader, for example, and it's being used somewhere, but we comment that line out or we declare a uniform, but we just don't use it yet or for whatever reason, then that's going to mean that it gets stripped, which means that we don't have that uniform in the shader at all. And this is gonna give us negative one, but that might like, we still want our shader to work like normal because we might have intentionally just declared a uniform, but not used it. So that's why I don't want to assert here, but we may want to print some kind of message here being like, you know, warning uniform and then name doesn't exist. Just in case we have a rendering error so that we can see that. And then we'll also return 
that location. Now, this is going to become get uniform location name, and this is get sorry get uniform location like that. So our our actual function that looks pretty good. Um, just make sure you call this v2 and v3 and not f for some reason. Don't know why why I did that. Just switched halfway through, but v just stands for value in our in our case. All right, cool. So that was pretty good. Now there is an issue that we'll address in a minute with the get your form location thing. But otherwise, I think that's pretty decent. Our code should work. So let's actually go back to application. And hopefully our code does work. I'm actually going to close everything but that. Okay, so this stuff is going to just become, uh, let's actually include shader at the top. First of all, include shader.h. And then down, down over here, shader, shader, and we'll take in this path. And then we'll do shader.bind. Then we can just leave it bound probably. And then instead of this location and whatever, we're trying to set that variable. This just kind of becomes shader dot set uniform for F the name, which is U underscore color. And then the actual values, which is this thing here. And then I believe, so you can see how much code that reduces. It's nice and simple. Now, uh, use program zero is just shader dot unbind. Um, with bind like buffers, we could probably address that in a minute as well. We don't actually, oh, we do have index buffer. We can do that in a minute. Um, GL use program shader, of course, is just shader dot bind. And this again, which is shader dot set uniform for F U color, and then that. Okay. So you can see how much that simplified our code. And then finally, we don't need to delete it at all because when we actually reach the end of the scope, it will be deleted by the destructor of shader. And yeah, so with this, I don't know why I've still got this, but GL array buffer, that's just v, uh, VB dot unbind. And then that's just IB dot unbind. So we might as well fix that now. Just unbinding everything. Basically I might just leave that like that. Okay, cool. So there we go. looks pretty good. Let's just hit F5 or run this and see what happens. Okay, so it looks pretty good. We get the same kind of rectangle and the colors working, so everything looks fine. So let's talk about this little problem that we have. So it's not really like a huge issue or anything, but in shader.cpp, what we actually have here is inside this get uniform location, every time we set this uniform, we actually retrieve the location again and again and again. And that's not particularly fast. What we actually want to do with this is cache it so that we only really retrieve it the first time and then that's it, we're done. And we can do that really, really easily. If we just go back to shader.h, I will include something called an unordered map, which is really just a hash map or a hash table. And then I'm just going to make std unordered map, std string to unsigned int and call this our location cache or specifically our uniform location cache, I should say. And then all I'm going to do here is the first thing I want to do is check to see if the uniform location cache actually contains the name. So if this doesn't equal M uniform location cache dot end, we'll simply return and if M, M uniform location cache and then the name. Otherwise we'll go ahead and retrieve the location. And if it actually doesn't equal negative one, then we can actually cache it. I mean, technically speaking, we, we don't really need, like we could cache it even if it is negative one, it's not like it's going to change whether or not uniform exists until we actually recompile the shader with potentially new code. So this doesn't, doesn't really need to be an else. In fact, I might remove this from else and just add it regardless. So we're actually adding that location there. And that way, if I just put a breakpoint here so that we can verify that it works properly, the first time that I run this code, we should of course result in a cache miss here and actually retrieve the location properly. You can see that the location is zero, which is a valid location. And then the second time, if I hit F5, that we actually go here, we should just return this without having to do the GL get uniform location. And you can see that that works. Okay. So of course we shouldn't see any difference visually, but that should provide us with a nice little performance boost, especially when we start having a lot of uniforms in our shaders. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That's pretty much all there is to it. As always, you can help support the series by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel and you'll get access to all the source code that I wrote here today, as well as kind of individual source code episode per episode. So definitely go help out support the series there. Huge thank you to everyone who does that because again, we wouldn't be here without those people. So thank you so much. That's pretty much all there is about like that, that, that is a basic shader kind of system that you can abstract out. I mean, you can go really, really crazily complicated with this and we will definitely do that. I promise in the game engine series, but for, for now, for this series, that's really it. 
I mean, if we jump back into our code really quickly, another thing we could do and well, we'll have to do is actually kind of extend this whole uniform thing. So for example, if we wanted to set a single float, so a one F, then we'd have to write another function here that actually just takes in our value like this. I'll go over here, copy this function, call it set uniform one F, remove all of these extra ones and this here as well. And you can see that we basically just, that, that's it. That's how we implement this, these. And I could go through and, impl and implement every single one, including the ones for matrices and integers and all that kind of stuff right now. But I don't want to bore you guys, you get the point anyway. And as we, as we require those set uniform functions, because as we start using those actual values, we'll have to kind of, we'll just implement them as we go along. And that, that way it'll be nice and easy and we don't have to spend like half an hour now writing all of the ones because that would be really boring. Anyway, next time, I think what else is there really to abstract? We have to deal with our renderer at some point. I don't know if that's necessarily gonna be next time, but it looks like everything else is pretty much abstracted away. I don't see any open jail code here, apart from our actual draw call, which, is, which, will be, which will be done by the renderer. So let's do that next time. Let's go ahead and abstract our renderer and actually create a renderer class into which we can kind of pass all of these objects that we've created. And hopefully then it will render something for us. Um, and then I think after that, we can probably move on to stuff like textures and more exciting things. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit that like button to let me know and leave a comment being like, this series is awesome or it's terrible, do this instead or whatever you want to write. That's what the comment section is for. Speak your mind. I will see you next time. Goodbye.